Tyler, just uh, how do you assess how you were able to uh, take advantage of the opportunities that you got after Kyle got hurt? Um, yes, it's something I've been waiting on for three years now, and I realize the opportunities are and they can be hard to come by in this league. And um, I knew whenever that it did come that I had to take advantage of it, and um, I tried to do my best to do that this year. And I think I did a pretty good job. Mike Zimmer had told us that uh, you had been showing in practice a lot of the things that you did. It was just that, you know, we weren't there to see it. What what was it maybe, was there steps forward that were taken over those three years to get to this point to be ready for the opportunity? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think a lot of, I always, I always look back on, on my past and like I was a walk-on at Central Michigan and, you know, being here and doing a lot of scout team stuff. And, you know, I've always kind of just took the approach of kind of putting my head down and, and earning everything. and. Um, you know, I just looked at scout team and, and doing those different things as a way to help the team, but also a way to, to get better and, and go out there and improve myself each and every day. Uh, you come in this building, um, and uh, you know, that was just kind of my motivation every day is to come in here and prove what I could do every day in practice, whether it's scout team or on our side of the ball or whatever it was. Tyler, every guy has a different way of handling the end of a season, right? Because only one team wins a Super Bowl. So uh, Afadi said he's a little angry. He, he'll need some time. Probably will move on after the Super Bowl is played this year. Adam says he moves on today. Uh, where do you stand? How do you handle it? Yeah, um, I'm kind of with Adam a little bit, you know, um, kind of move on today and, you know, start focusing on what I what I can do as an individual to, to help this not have this feeling next year. Um, I think that's kind of can be a big part of this game is short term memory loss sometimes because, um, you know, bad things happen. You got to bounce back. And you know, I'm kind of using that same approach going into this offseason. And I know you and I have talked about this earlier in the season, but just to have like you and Irv mentioned in, in terms of the, the Vikings tight end future after all the work that you've put in. That must make you excited, right, to go into the off season and work more. How do you feel about being mentioned as part of the tight end future? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, it's something, you know, coming into this league, I, I knew I could be a, a good player in this league, and it's something that you have to prove each and every day. And um, it's definitely exciting, but it's something that you got to prove each and every day. Like I said, I mean, you got to come in here and, you know, every game, every practice prove that you deserve to do that. And uh, I'm excited to do that. And it's definitely going to and make the off season fun. You know, it, it, it'd be going to make it a, a fun grind. Tyler, it seems like even though you had limited opportunities in the passing game coming into the season or even toward the until the end of the season, um, Kirk uh, trusted you as, as a as a target. Um, where do you think that came from, or sort of how do you feel like you earned his trust? Um, whenever the whenever I did have chances, you know. Um, I feel like making those plays, whether you know whether it was one every couple of games or whatever it came, I just feel like you had you got to earn that trust. You got to earn it in practice, and um, also just communicating. You know, just talking about how you're going to do things, how he wants things done. I think all those little things, you know, go into you know building chemistry um, with your quarterback. I think that helped a lot. I think in this last month too, you had a few plays where it was third down or fourth down, and, and you're he's kind of finding you to move the chains. Is that kind of how it was drawn up or is, is it just kind of where he's just kind of going naturally to find you? I think it's a little, it's, I mean, a lot of times it's how it's drawn up. A lot of times it's just where he gets in his progression or what the defense gives him. Um, Kirk does a great job of, you know, just going with the flow of a game and, and doing what the, you know, making a play with what the defense gives him. And I think, you know, it just happened to be me and on a lot of those third and fourth down plays towards the end of the year. And, you know, I was happy that I could, happy I could make those plays and keep building some trust. Tyler, you made a big step this year. What do you have to do next year to take the next step in the NFL? Um, just kind of hit on what I was talking about earlier, which is proving, my, proving yourself every day, every game. Um, obviously, going to this off season and you know attacking it and working harder than I ever have before and getting better, all the, you know, at everything. I mean, there's unlimited things you can get better at, especially at the tight end position, with how much you have to do, whether it's in the run game or pass game or um, you know pass protection. So. You know, I just want to really attack this offseason and, and improve on, on all those things and then come out next year and, you know, starting in camp, just keep proving myself every day. 
Tyler, with the roster turnover every year, it's stuff that, you know, players can't control. But if this if this does end up being your last season with, with Kyle Rudolph, if they end up moving on from whatever uh, might happen, what will you and Irv, like, what's the lasting impression that you guys will have having played with him for a couple of years? And what did he teach you the most about playing tight end and being able to do it at a high level for the last couple of years? Yeah, um, this is a question I get asked a lot. And Rudy's just a, just a heck of a person. Um, I think... You know, coming in, uh, my first three years, there, there wasn't a better person I could have learned under him. Just the way he handles himself as, as a pro, whether it's you know, off the field, on the field, being in the building early, leaving late, how he practices, um, and on top of that, just how smart he is. Um, he's one of the smartest players I've, I've ever been around. Um, just knowing what the defense is going to do, and you know, being able to read defenses and all those things. And um, on top of that, he's you know, a hell of a football player. So he's taught me so much, and he's been instrumental in you know my growth in my first three years. As you, and I guess as you look back at all the offensive coordinators you've had uh, since you first came in as a rookie a couple years ago, how would you say the role of tight ends under different play callers has evolved from 18 to 2020? Um, you know, towards the end of, end of the season, I feel like tight ends were really getting involved a lot. And it was, you know, um, I think part of it has to do with uh, maybe OCs, maybe play calling. I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, Kirk getting more comfortable with, um, with certain people. and. Um, so I think it's a combination of a lot of different things.